So today we are going to be talking about your cycle. Now, this is not an NFP video. This is a video just on the very basics of what it looks like from the day of our period until the day of our next period. And I wanted to make this video because I have been tracking my cycle very closely for the last about 18 cycles. And I've learned a lot about my body. Now, usually when we're trying to conceive, we are very adamant about learning how our bodies work. And sometimes it's the very first time we've ever come across our cycle in any kind of intellectual way. It's really sad actually that the healthcare system and women's healthcare doesn't teach every young girl, 12 and older, what this looks like and what's going on in your body. Because if we had all known about what's going on, then we can one, figure out if something's wrong, but also just have a much better idea of what it looks like because being a woman is very different from being a man. And we go through hormonal changes in, in, the, in the average cycle of 28 days, and we go through bodily changes, and some days are gonna feel better than others, and it's nice to kind of know that. You're just doing studies on exercise, and a woman, um, as a woman versus a man. And there's a lot of differences. We can't just go, go, go for days and days and days in a row because of these hormonal changes. So I just wanted to walk you through um, just a really basic, this is your cycle. And based on like the, what I've learned over the last 18 cycles. And then also I will show you the LH strips I use and the pregnancy test strips I use because they're really inexpensive. And then at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, transitioning into a cup and reusable pads for your period, but that'll be at the end. So hopefully nobody gets a little squeamish watching this video, but this is our bodies and we need to understand about them, right? So here we go. So day one is the first day of your period. Now, most girls are going to have a period on average for about five days. Right? And so we're bleeding and we're getting, it's getting lighter and then it stops. Then you're going to have a couple dry days. These are days where you don't create any cervical fluid and you know, the estrogen is still slightly building up, but everything's pretty chill still. This is an amazing time to start a workout program or some kind of healthy eating um, plan because your body's primed to kind of start those kind of endeavors. At this point, you're gonna feel, you should feel really good this first half of your cycle. And this is called the follicular half of your cycle. And that's because your egg is getting ready to release. So this line here, this purple line is your estrogen. And that's going to peak a few days before you ovulate and then actually start to go down before ovulation day. Progesterone is this um, orange line and it pretty much stays pretty steady until afterwards when you're in the luteal phase. And this is the phase where we have a lot of PMS slash pregnancy symptoms. We don't really know what's going on. Maybe if we're trying to conceive, you know, it, we can get all in our head about things going on this half of the cycle. You know, if that's not an option for you, then you still might have post ovulation things going on, ovulation symptoms, you could, um, you know, we, we tend to be a little more tired on this side of things and, um, and like I said, a little moody because that's because you got your progesterone going up. All right. So after these few dry days, as you get closer to your LH peak, which is your luteinizing hormone, you're going to start developing different kinds of cervical fluid. And I'm, we have to talk about it because this is a really important, um, especially when you're trying to conceive, this is really important to understand what's going on with your body. So I'm not going to go into all the different kinds of cervical fluid, but pretty much you're going to have some cervical fluid that might be less fertile. And then there's other cervical fluid like the egg white or the watery cervical fluid that is more um, fertile. So you're going to get those right here where you're going to, you know, you might have um, one, two, three, or four days. Um, and then your ovulation date is always the last day of your what they call fertile fluid. And it's the fluid that what it does is that God is so great, right? He has it to where your body is creating the prime environment for the sperm to survive and get to the egg because your body is created for, fertility is created for conception and for carrying a baby. And so these few days are, if you're trying to conceive, this is when you wanna be you know, renewing your wedding vows. I'm gonna use Catholic terminology here. 
And so we're going to talk about how to track your ovulation. But the first thing you're going to want to do, which is really helpful, even if you just want to understand your cycle, is to get some LH strips. These are the LH strips that I get. They're just called ovulation test kits by Clinical Guard. I'll link them down below, of course. And they're just these little tiny cheapy strips. And you would pee in a cup. And then, you know, you dip it for three seconds, you wait the five minutes, it's just like a pregnancy test, but it's a little bit different because a lot of times this, this luteolizing hormone, which is the, um, the green here, sometimes you always have like a little bit in your body. So you can get a faint line and that's actually still a negative when it comes to an ovulation test. And so you'll see the line darkening and darkening as you get closer to your peak. Um, I don't know, at the end I'm going to put in an app I use that will intelligently recognize you take a picture of your test and it'll tell you whether you are low, high, peaking, high, or you know, low again. A positive LH test is either going to be the lines are going to be equal or the test line is going to be darker than the control line. And so um, what you usually your peak which is that really, really dark line that's darker than your control line, is going to happen 12 to 48 hours before you ovulate. So when you are testing with LH, that does not mean that your peak is your ovulation. Your ovulation could technically occur in the same day if you say you get your peak early in the morning and then you ovulate later that night. But the only way to test for actual ovulation is to either get proved strips which tests your progesterone level, or track your symptoms, or take your temperature, which this video is not about temping, but there's lots of videos online about temping. So it's gonna look like this. So if you have a strip, there's a control line. If this is like fainter, then that's that's a that's a like a low, a negative or a low. And then if it's the same, then it's um it's considered like high or a positive, but then like my app will tell me it'll get darker than this control line and my app will actually read the percentage based on intelligent recognition. It's really cool. So again, I'll put that app up. I'll put it up here too. So you're gonna test that. Now, in terms of body, um, I realized as I was tracking this that every single month I get ovulation pain, which there's a German word for it that I can't remember. Ovulation pain can occur before, during, or after ovulation. It's really like intense for me and it lasts for about a day, sometimes even a little bit longer. And it lets me know that ovulation is taking place and my body will also res respond to that, meaning that my cervical fluid will dry up about a day after that happens and um, I'll start getting ovulation symptoms. Now sometimes I actually get nauseous around ovulation, um, sometimes um, my breasts get sore. <laughs> We're just going to talk real here. And, and so those are ways to kind of track that this progesterone is going high. So then once ovulation occurs, you're in the luteal phase of your cycle. And like I said, you can track it based on cervical fluid because this will start to dry up again once, um, once you've ovulated. Because your body has done what it needed to do to get the sperm to the egg. Now, if you are pregnant, this these drops won't occur and that and your temperature will also stay up high if you're temping. So your body here is building up your lining in your uterus in case you conceived. Conception happens immediately, but implantation happens between six and nine, six and twelve days after ovulation. I think the average though is about six or seven. You won't create any pregnancy hormones until after that egg actually implants and then it takes, it doubles every 48 hours, I think. So day six, which you say, so you would say six days past ovulation is how we talk about this side of the cycle. And um, that's usually when implantation will occur and then your positive pregnancy test would be in here. If for some reason the conception didn't occur or even if the conception occurred and the baby didn't implant, which is why please don't ever use birth control because this could happen in that situation. Um, and that's like, abortive. But if everything just naturally, say naturally just doesn't happen, implantation, then these hormones are going to drop. This egg is going to kind of travel through unfertilized and then you would have your period at the end of your cycle and it would start all over again. And so 
for me, knowing my cycle means that I know just some really basic things about my body. I know when I'm generally gonna feel really good and when I'm gonna feel like working out, when I'm gonna feel like being more active with my kids, when my mood's probably gonna be more stable. These days in here, I am a very happy Laura, okay? Around ovulation, I can get a bit cranky. Some people experience some PMS symptoms around ovulation just because things are going on in your body. And then after here, now there is some good news because, so here this estrogen, estrogen makes you feel real good, okay? Most of the time. And then you get a secondary peak and it's kind of like a reprieve. And you're like, oh God, thank goodness. And you have a couple good days, right? And then down here when everything drops off, you feel kind of, kind of bummy. Over here, be more gentle with yourself. Try to be more patient, you know, those kinds of things. And the other thing I wanted to share with you, so this is a, an average, but a lot of women have much longer cycles and some women have shorter cycles. And the other thing is that you do not ovulate on the same day every month. And that's why some people get those surprise pregnancies because they go, oh no, I always ovulate day 14. And then God's gonna come along here and he's gonna be like, it's gonna be day 10 and whoop, which you should know is coming because you should be getting those fertile days in here. And so track your cervical fluid because even if that's not your main symptom, it's such a helpful symptom to know what's going on. Um, and then those LH strips, those are like scientific knowledge um, about the fact that you're about to ovulate. Now, if you're a teenager or you're somebody who is not sexually active, then I still think this is good to do for a couple cycles just to kind of get your head in the game. You wouldn't have to use LH strips unless you are wondering if you're even ovulating or if possibly you're getting like two peaks. There's all sorts of things that kind of be, can, can be going on with your body that makes it to where this is really important knowledge. And then what you do is you take this to your doctor if you have any concerns and you're like, hey, I know that on this, you know, say you track for four months, you know that this month you had a four day cycle, you ovulated, you know, you got your LH peak day 12, so you ovulated, let's say day 13, and then you had your period on day 26. But then say the next uh, cycle, you only had two days of your period, you got your peak on um, day 10, you uh, think you ovulated day 11, and then for some reason on day 17, you got your cycle. That's, that's concerning, right? And you would wanna go to the doctor, but you're only gonna know that if you take some data on your, health, on your body. This is science, and this is information, and this is important information. And um, as women, we are just so, so very different from men and we have to embrace that. Now, now, if you are a husband or a father, it is also just so important for you to understand this, to understand what's going on with your wife. Um, it's not uncharitable to be a little kinder to her on this side of the things, right? To understand and give her a little bit more grace because she is battling with hormones that are up and down and up and down. You know, this is, this is a roller coaster that women go on every single cycle. And whether that's fair or not, this is the way God made us. And so it's important to, to kind of understand it and grasp it, especially with young daughters, especially when they start going through the cycles. So if you guys have any questions for me about cycles in general, if you want to tell me, um, I don't know, obviously I'm not a doctor, <laughs> and, um, but I can tell you like what I've experienced and what I use. Um, I do wanna show you guys also, and everything's clean, but I wanted to show you um, what a cup and, a, and a, a reusable pad look like, and also the pregnancy tests I use that are super cheap. So these are by the same company, the Clinical Guard, and same exact deal, right? They're pregnancy tests. So you put them in the, you pee in the cup, put them in for three seconds, wait the five minutes, and of course, pregnancy tests, if there's any kind of line, you are pregnant. You also want to check expiration dates on these things, but, um, if there's a faint line, you're pregnant. And just take one again the next day or take wait a couple days to take another one and it should continue to darken as the HCG build up in your system. Okay, so a pad looks like this and it's just, like these ones are nice and dark. They're super easy to wash. I have a whole video about why I switched to reusable pads and cups. 
So um, I will put that up here and down below. These are by um, We Gre We Greco, and so I really love that brand. And they're bamboo cotton, I think. And um, they have different sizes. And then this is the cup I have. I've gotten two different cups. When I first started, I got a softer cup um, in order to make it easier to um, take out. But then I noticed that it wasn't opening fully, so I got a firmer cup that makes it more secure inside. You also learn very quickly whether you have a shorter uh, uh, vaginal canal or a longer one, I think that's the right word. And so um, there's different sizes for different needs, but it just looks like this and you just fold it and insert it and then it pops open, not that violently, inside and, um, and it just collects all of your uh, menstrual fluid, you know, into menstrual blood, into the cup and then once or twice a day, well twice a day, maybe more if you need to, you empty it and it's just very easy and it's very cost effective because you're, I don't buy tampons or pads anymore and um, it's just, I don't know, it's real easy. So if you have questions about that, like I said, I have a video, but I've been wanting to make this video for a while and I felt like I couldn't because my husband had a vasectomy and I felt like a hypocrite talking about cycles and pregnancy and all the things. And so now that he's had the reversal and we are open to life, I just feel like I'm much more in a place where I feel like I can talk about this stuff with a sense of knowledge and not feel like a hypocrite inside. So thank you for everybody who's kept us in our, your prayers. Um, we'll find out soon whether, you know, first cycle worked or not. I'm kind of like here in my cycle. So we'll see if these, I'm not temping, so I have no idea. With that, continue to know God, love God, and do God's will. And I'm going to talk to you again really soon. Again, Put comments down below, put questions down below, like this video, and subscribe if you're new. Talk to you later. Bye.